All right, boys, just after 7 a.m., we're here in the neighborhood. Um, they had a new driveway put in. There was a break there. I fixed that the other day. Now we got a little crack here, too, because when they, you know, have heavy machines here and stuff, they it's busted up this irrigation line. So I'm actually going to put that head over here so it's not right there on the edge of the driveway while we're doing it. But anyway, I got to repair this. Cut here, a couple elbows will probably come up, you know. Put a new T-section in. I'm going to put it over here, though. Put the head here because it makes more sense for the grass anyway. So, yeah, we better get on that. Got it done. Um, Got to finish burying this, but customer's gonna bury this little spot um, once the because uh, I want to let it dry for a few hours. Got the wet and dry glue on there, primed it, all that stuff. It's good to go. But I would just to be safe, I let, like to let it dry for a few hours before you bury it with the wet dirt, you know. So anyway. So that's it for here. We're going to move on to the next one. All right, boys, so starting to uh, edge up this lawn. And y'all remember back in the day, had a problem with the throttle cable on this. I've replaced it once or twice. And it felt like that now, because you go full throttle and it just stays full throttle. Um, 
but the throttle cable is fine this time something to do with that little return spring right there i'm not going to take it all apart to look at it right now but that return spring that like makes it it's like the cable is fine you see you go wide open and it that spring is not returning it you can return it with your finger like that but man that sucks too i mean i beat the snot out of this trimmer for i say i beat this snot. i mean i just use it a lot i mean i take care of it I've had it for three years now and uh darn i guess i gotta fix that spring because i was gonna sell it and get a new one i love the lightness of it i love this trimmer but dang it i guess i'm gonna use my quick lock system for the rest of the day because i have my string trimmer you know quick lock deal so i'll have to run that i guess because i'm not going to take it apart because that if that spring's broke i don't have the stuff with me to fix it right now even if the spring is not broke uh you know i have to use you know get some uh cleaner and clean all this which i don't have with me so this one is going to be parked for the day that sucks but uh tempted to switch over to all electric anyway um for a lot of reasons but anyway yeah let's keep moving here at the next yard and uh since i'm rocking my milwaukee trimmer today I'm gonna plug this in straight out of my friend mitch's playbook i'll put a link to his channel down below so that's gonna charge up I have a couple batteries, but not as many as I need. So that's going to charge up while we're going ahead and mow up this lawn and do all the things. Mow an edge and blow and possibly need to trim some shrubs. Spray some Roundup, pick up sticks. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it going. What's up, everybody? Um, hope you guys are doing great. Uh, man, I had to stop mid-route over one of my other neighborhoods because I had a customer, like one of my biggest customers, y'all know that big couple, I think it's three acre property out here, the big wood area where I clean up the wood and everything. Um, y'all seen plenty of videos on before, beautiful house, beautiful lawn around the house and everything. Anyway, they had a, they're putting a seawall in and the guys that are putting in the seawall, you know, it's per normal but they hit the uh the irrigation line that goes into the lake and stuff and so she was kind of panicked about that because he didn't know how to get the pump running so I had to drive over here and do that because you know he's not on the route for today it's just crazy it's crazy in the springtime because my route is already way too stacked for the day as it is and then to have a call like that and you got to stop <laughs> you know just stop mid-route and drive over here you know waste 30 minutes or an hour it's man it's unfortunate but yeah you know they're a good customer i gotta you know gotta take care of them and so and i'm glad that uh you know i'm glad that the seawall guy wants to find the the break and get it fixed right so great great guys that are uh, doing the seawall uh because they could just leave it and just let them figure it out. I, they have to pay me to fix it or whatever else, you know. So I'm glad they're fixing it. But uh, something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. So I'm going back to continue my route because there's a bunch of work or a bunch of stuff they're still doing there today. I can't really do that lawn today. Um, man. So anyway, so I'm going on, continue my route. Man, it's just, it's tough because there's just not enough hours in a day. Um, and uh but something i want to talk to you guys about is i'm really you know i gotta fix this harness husk of iron weed or which is no problem it's it's you know it, that little spring just where i mean that's a uh, three years of year-round use i mean that <laughs> that thing um you know it's a uh, it's just you know it's twisted a lot of times it might have broke maybe it just came off and i can put it back and it'll work but i usually y'all know how that is i'm usually not that lucky in life <laughs> and uh it's usually not how it works um so springs probably broke i don't know if that's just like part of the carburetor or what so like i'm not going to take it apart right now even though i have tools with me but i want to like get it nice and cleaned out of there and do all that 
So I'll have to do that later when I get home, which I'll, you know, <laughs> when we have time to mess with it. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that and I wanna get a new weed eater, a new, sell that and get a new gas weed eater. But, but it's like, I'm always in this predicament where it's like, I don't know if I wanna add another, replace that one with another gas weed eater in my collection or if I just wanna buy a couple more batteries and uh, run the electric stuff. Um, plug in a few times a day at customers' houses to keep things topped off. And I even talked to a couple customers about it. They don't care, they like it. Uh, they like that it's quiet and all that. Um, but I don't know that it's, uh, you know, and I explained to them the breakdown of how much it costs, because I had a friend, I'll go into more detail about it, y'all check out my podcast, Long Care Talk. You know, I explain how much it is to charge the batteries and all that, so I explained that to them. So customers would be fine with it, even if I ran all electric weeders and blowers and plugged in on their front porch, you know, my little charger, they don't care. Um, so I could do that. I could do that, technically. I just gotta figure out if I wanna do that. Um, so, when I sell this house to wearing a weeder, um, you know, I might buy another one just like it, replace it, or I might buy something else. You know, I could, I might buy an Echo, because I've never had an Echo, so I kinda wanna try one, even though I don't think I'll really like it. Um, uh, I might buy that, or like I said, or I might just buy a couple more batteries, because, you know, um, you know, it's always an option. It's just always hard because the batteries are expensive. It's like if I buy two batteries, I could buy top of the line 2620T or buy the 525LST or, you know, I get a high-end gas weed eater for the price of those two batteries, even though I'm getting them on eBay and stuff for a good price. Um, but, you know, electric is nice. I like it. I mean, no carburetors, no mess. Uh, no noise, no gas, no, you know, it's cool. I mean, technology is really getting there. I mean, that Milwaukee Weeder is every bit as strong as any of my uh, gas ones, even my KM130 uh, four-stroke deal. You know, I mean, that on high mode, that Milwaukee trimmer is strong. Quick lock system. So, power's not an issue. Um, I just got to figure out, I guess, if I want to, you know, just deal with the hassle of going up before I start the lawn and plug in the customer's house and, you know, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, just a little bit of hassle factor there and trying to keep your batteries cool and all that. Um, but I still might do that because uh, I like it. I mean, I just, I've never, I have a million problems with my steel, my hustle iron, with all the gas brands, but like, Literally, I've beat on my Milwaukee trimmer, my first Milwaukee trimmer that I had. Had it, this is like its fourth season now. Run the battery dead on it, one battery per day, you know, early in the morning for four years now. Every single day, it's still on the same battery, no problems with the battery. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have any evidence, I don't have any evidence that the uh, electric stuff is not reliable. I just don't have any evidence of that. Um, I mean, it's very reliable up to this point. So, I don't know. I don't know, a lot to think about. Uh, Got to get back to mowing. There's a Ford Raptor in front of me. That's a cool truck. I'd like to have one of those one day, maybe. Um, but anyway, yeah. We need to get back to mowing. I'll try to get y'all a little bit more mowing footage. Let's keep, keep going. <laughs>